Hey there internets, I'm Michael and this is Two Can Play That Game, bringing you a review of Creature College by Happy Otter Games. Now this is a game that successfully kickstarted in 2005 and is now available in retail. Um, what is the game? Well, it's kind of Pokemon-esque in that you have creatures but it's not really creatures in the sense of evolving them and stuff. You're each students at this college out in space somewhere where they teach you how to create or capture or you somehow make creatures. And then you're using these creatures to battle, to prove whose creature is the best, who's the best at making these creatures. That's what the college is all about and that's also what the game is all about. Because you're trying to earn victory points where the victory points represent how good of a trainer slash creator, geneticist or whatever you are because there's all sorts of different characters who have gone about creating them in different ways. Now there are lots of different ways to get victory points. You can get victory points for winning fights in each of the fight rounds and the game is split up into three different terms and at the end of each term you have a fight round. Otherwise there are free drafting, well bidding rounds in each of the terms. So the game is made up of 12 rounds, nine that are bidding and three that are fighting. If you win fights, you get victory points or you get actually these pretty cool green gems, which count as victory points at the end of the game. If you lose battles, you get these red gems, which give you minus victory points at the end of the game. You can also get victory points from um, upgrade cards that you get each turn. You can get victory points for collecting the various different um, creatures. They're broken down into five elements. And for each number you have in a certain element, you'll get a certain number of victory points at the end of the game. And also you have missions to collect certain elements, a certain number of each element. And if you meet your mission, you get a bunch, bunch of victory points. So lots of different ways to get those victory points. And at the end of the game, which is once all three terms, so once the college year is over, whoever has the most wins. Now, if this is all a bit confusing and you do want to go into a bit more detail on that gameplay and how to play, then please do check out my previous videos. I've actually already done a how-to and a playthrough, so that should tell you everything you possibly need to know. So now let's get on with the actual review portion. What do I think of Creature College? Well, we'll start with the artwork. I absolutely love the artwork in this. It is so cute. It is so family-friendly, so child-friendly, absolutely gorgeous. I love it. Now, it won't appeal to a lot of people, but it does appeal to me, and it does carry on throughout all of these cards, especially on all the monster stuff. Some people may find this just too cutesy, just too childish, and I have actually encountered that, and I have found that that can be a barrier for this game of getting it to the table and getting people to actually play it. Because they look at this box, and they see these cutesy cartoons, and they think, child's game. And they have no interest whatsoever. Now, I'm not saying it's not a child's game and that it's not child friendly, but it is playable by adults too. But before I go into that, let's talk about the components because as well as the artwork, the components is another place that they have done a really fantastic job. One of the huge selling points of this game. Now, the player boards, thick, sturdy cardboard, bright, vibrant colors, you know, with lovely artwork. Oh, that one's upside down, so is he. Never mind. <laughs> you know, you've got these interesting characters, nice colours, good quality on there. The layout is all very clear, concise, family friendly. What else we got component wise? Well, I talked earlier about these gems, crystals, lovely, glorious, shiny goodness. These are really nice. These are plastic. Um, yeah, they're just nice, faceted gem-like things that do look like gems and work really nicely and people want to win these they want to have these they want to hold them having a whole pile and just dropping them out really nice pleasing good components then you have all the wooden components in this so you've got all these numbered tokens that are wood all painted up with the numbers on really well done really high quality and there's also some wooden cubes again good nice clean cut high quality components. The cards, okay, these little square cards, 
I'm not too fond of. I actually find these a little fiddly. They're just that bit too small, I think. Um, so they're very fiddly for trying to shuffle and I end up knocking them everywhere. You can't really do a flick shuffle. Um, yeah, I'm not keen on them, but they do work very nicely functionally wise for doing the job they need to do. Then, of course, we have the cards. The cards are really good, nice. I mean, they could be better. They're, they're good quality cards, though. They're not bad. They'll last reasonably well. And, of course, you've got all the layout and everything. is really nice. Now, that, of course, leaves the gameplay. And, unfortunately, this is where it falls down for me a little. Now, a lot of people I've played with have really enjoyed this. And, in fact, some friends of mine asked if they could have... My, the copy that I've been sent and I've said sure if you love it that much yeah you can have it um, but I found the gameplay just felt a bit too random at times the strategy that was there didn't feel that strong so what I'm talking about here is yes the drafting sorry the bidding you you are bidding but there's no chance to then go over bid you know you're only putting your number out once it works quite well in a larger group don't get me wrong this game actually works best i would say at four or five people probably five is the best number to have for this game and so at two player it just doesn't work really and the other numbers it's fine six it can run a bit long so the mechanics of the bidding with putting the tokens out, there's no real secrecy there because everyone can see what everyone has, which is fine. It means that you can plan, OK, well, if I use this, I use this. As I say, it can work nicely when it's a lot of people and you're bumping off to different things. But when you get to like two player game and it's right, well, there are three options of cards. I'm happy with either of those two. Well, it doesn't matter what I play, I just play my lowest number because if even if they bump me off one of them, I'll still get the other one and I'm fine with that. And that tends to be a case a lot of the time. So in a two player game, really falls flat that bidding. Um, and obviously that's a big portion of the game. In fact, it's three quarters of the game is that bidding. So in a two player game, that really falls flat. So that kind of puts me off a little. Um, in the multiplayer, it does work a lot better. Now, when it comes to the fighting, it feels a bit like you have to invest in those battle cards. But then even if you invest in those battle cards, how many battle cards you get comes down to a dice. If someone just rolls two all the time on those dice and has more battle cards and then the battle cards they draw are more powerful. I mean, the range of those battle cards is one to five. That is a huge difference. And someone can just destroy you because they got a five that's more powerful than any of the monsters you have type thing. Can be a little frustrating that. That's what I'm talking about when I say it's just too luck heavy for my tastes because the way it works with those battle cards of you draw a battle card and it gets that and then you have the option. I do like the way you have the option, I will say this, of choosing research dice or battle card dice. That works really nicely and you tend to find people go more for the research dice in the early game or the late game, depending on whether they comes up with victory points, people might grab at the victory points in the final spring term, for example, whereas gem research people seem to really want in the early game. Um, but again, that introduces the heavy luck aspect. If you go, right, well, I want to play, a, get a load of gems and then win battles in the later um, terms, you can't necessarily do that because if the dice don't let you... You can't play into that strategy. Yes, that does mean, of course, that there is a matter of adapting your strategy as you go based on what you're presented with, which does mean that you've then got choices there. And that's what I'm talking about. The choice between those two dice can work really nicely. However, if it comes up a two, you take the battle cards pretty much all the time because two battle cards is really valuable. Or can be, as I already said. You could get two ones and someone else gets one five, meaning their one card was better than your two, but obviously the more you draw, the more chance you have of good cards. Yeah, you see, I kind of go around in circles about this. Um, and it's the same with a lot of these research cards because if you get a plus two card, especially in two player, you get the plus two card because that's doubled on like the gem research. That's really powerful compared to if you get the minus one red. 
But then that's where, yeah. I think this is the issue. I find it's not quite tactical enough, but it does give you those choices. But then it's frustrating because you're just rolling the wrong thing or drawing the wrong thing and you can't mitigate that luck, really. You have to play into it with your strategy and adjust your strategy based on the luck of this game. But you can't mitigate it in any way. You can't buy things to mean you get more choice to or roll more dice or anything like that. Um, which would be good, I think, and would probably make me more enjoy the game. Another thing that I've noticed with these games, it feels like the game should progress and build towards the end. And it does a little because you tend to build up more monsters that maybe haven't been in a fight or more battle cards. And that's why uh, Kevin, the 50 foot giga pig, gets harder each turn. But in reality, because those monsters that you have aren't getting any better or any harder, it doesn't really feel like there's enough progression there. Um, but that's why this works. All of these things are why it works so well and so fantastically well as a family game, because that incredibly high luck means that just because you're an adult and you're better at strategy, etc., than your children, you're not necessarily going to beat your children because they might have the luck on their side. And so that makes it fantastic. But because there are choices there, the parents will still enjoy it. So this is a fantastic game for families. I will say that. And adults can enjoy it. As I say, some of my friends love this game. Absolutely love it. They were enamoured with it. Like me, they loved the artwork, but they also really enjoyed the gameplay aspect and maybe part of that is they will pretty much only ever play with four or five people and so that's optimum numbers for this game so it works really well with them whereas most of my plays are with just me and my wife and as you can tell this is two can play that game that's a big deal for me and the game really falls flat in the two player I found so the the big thing was the bidding just doesn't work in a two player I mean it works it's just not enjoyable not fun not challenging enough so that's my thoughts on Creature College if you are a family gamer if you've got kids you will probably really enjoy this really love it you should maybe watch more of my videos see what you actually think if you're just you and your partner gaming and that's why you watch this channel avoid this one but as I say, there are people who will like it. There are people who won't. Uh, so that's it for this video. I do hope you've enjoyed it and found it useful. Of course, if you have, please do subscribe to the channel and check out the rest of the videos on the channel and share them with your friends and family. And do also take a look at us on social media. You can find us on Facebook and on Twitter. And as always, thanks for watching and bye for now.